Hi everyone and welcome to a new episode of the New Leaf Podcast, which is my podcast about knitting, crocheting, and my journey as a full-time knitwear and crochet designer. Hi, my name is Garmin. How have you guys been? It's only been a week since my last episode, but it feels like it's been a long time because a lot of stuff has happened. I have so much to show you. So I think I'm gonna rush through all the things really fast. <laughs> Uh, just so I can get it done before we lose the light. That is the mission today. I have two finished objects. I have a lot of progress on my Spectre sweater and a lot of plans and some bullet journaling, believe it or not. Um, yes, so I think I'm going to start with the finished objects first. Um, and also, I've been thinking about doing live podcasts again. <laughs> I actually wanted to do that today, but I thought it would be too short of a time to announce it. And then I fear that, you know, there's going to be tumbleweed. No one's going to show. <laughs> so uh, I think I have to do it kind of scheduled and um, so that people know in advance. So I'll have a think about that. I don't want to do a live podcast every week, but maybe like the first of the month, the first podcast episode of the month or the last of the month, something like that, maybe. Uh, so yes, I have finished some socks. I have finished my rainbow um, socks um, that were almost finished last week. Um, they just needed an afterthought heel. I think I was midway through this afterthought heel um, and I have to start the second one and this um, I recorded the podcast on January 7th and they were done on January 8th so that was pretty good um, the yarn that I'm using is rainbow bouquet self-striping yarn um, that is by Créaline Design so rainbow bouquet is the colorway name it's a beautiful rainbow um, cell striper um, and I have alternated it with a light gray yarn that I dyed myself. Um, I'm no longer dyeing yarns, um, just so you know, but um, it was just really fun to do. So um, I dyed that light gray yarn with uh, acorns. Um, Acorns, acorns. I'm always a little bit unsure of how to pronounce it. Um, and when you dye with acorns, it turns caramel colored first, like a beigey sand colored. But if you put iron in it, then it turns gray. So I did some darker grays, and that this was one of the lighter grays. I think I actually have some skeins left of this exact sock yarn, but um, yeah. If you're interested in knitting this exact same pair with, you know, my hand dyed in there, shoot me a message. Um, so I did this, uh, I knit them helical style or helical knitting style where you alternate um, yarns and it is usually done for um, hand dyed yarns where you want to alternate skeins for you know to get a more even color because hand dyed yarns if you're using more than one skein they can differ in color um, but here I wanted to actually create stripes um, so that was really fun um, and I followed a tutorial by Grace O'Neill from Babbles Yarns. I talked about that a little bit last week. Um, and so this is the right side. Um, and you create, you, you alternate each round. And before the end of the round, uh, three stitches before the end um, you slip those next three stitches and then knit with the next color um, and it sounds easy and it is super easy and this way you don't get those um, little floats of carrying up 
a yarn. It will kind of twist on the wrong side of your work. Um, I don't have anything handy where I've done that, uh, but that shows up on the wrong side of your work. And so with helical knitting, I'm able to turn it to the wrong side and there aren't any um, floats. You don't see any, um, you know, places where the yarn has changed color. Um, so that was really fun. Uh, I am planning to write a pattern for this, but don't hold your breath <laughs> because I have a lot of patterns to publish in the meantime. Um, I did, so I did the toe with the self-striping yarn and then I alternated throughout the sock and then the um, cuff is a corrugated rib. So it's knit to purl to but in color work. If you're interested in knowing more about that, I have a tutorial for it on my Patreon page. It's part of my um, color work confidence masterclass. And then uh, the afterthought heel, I knit them in matching colors. This one, uh, this apple green is um, a colorway from Ya yeah Wool, um, which I think is a yarn range of Lang yarns, I think. Because I think that more or less matched with the uh, greens in here. And then um, for this one, it's in the dark blue section and I, and I had a more or less perfect match of the um, Coop Knits um, yarn. Um, Coop Knits, she is a designer from the UK and yeah, I just know she has a sock yarn line and I bought two skeins of those at uh, Yarndale a couple of years ago. So I was able to use a little bit for that. And yeah, they are done. And I love them. I am really happy that I um, chose the wrong side, you know, the pearl side here, because um, uh, one of my followers, Olga, she uh, messaged me to say that the knit side is often, you know, it's is smoother so that um, that it is gentler on your skin so that these are actually you know more comfortable to wear on your feet so I am very uh, curious to see um, if that is also the case for me so these socks are finished finished <laughs> and um, I have brought the whip board back or the progress board um, yeah, it needs a more exciting name. Now it's the whip board. Um, and the rainbow socks are on here. So I am going to mark my progress as done. Ta-da! So that will be taken off the board next week. And I'll have some new projects on there. I wonder if I should put it in the screen, although I kind of like this here. How do you like my pineapple plant? It's aloe vera in a pot that is painted as a pineapple. <laughs> um, and my next finished object, uh, I have not blocked them yet, so they look a little bit... Um, <laughs> They don't look as neat. Uh, they are my toe-up gusset heel socks. And last week I had finished, or I had knit the first sock up until here. And I have used this little um, sparkly bauble progress keeper. I got this from Undercover Otter. And... <laughs> I had to off, off. and I finished the sock and within 24 hours after that I have finished the second sock as well. I was editing the videos for this tutorial um, and I was just knitting on the sock while I was watching the tutorial. It's, it's one of my favorite things to do to edit a tutorial video and to just knit at the 
the same time. Um, I also still have to weave in the ends on this one. Um, so I decided to do angle socks um, because I had actually not paid a lot of attention to the size of this sock um, while filming the tutorial video. So in the tutorial, um, it's now live on my Patreon page for Rosewood, Willow, and Elder Tier patrons. This is the Toe Up Gusset Heel um, he heel <laughs> pattern. Uh, so the toe is not included in there, but um, since I have loads of videos of me knitting sock toes already, I thought to just do a video on the heel, how to implement it, and uh, just to skip the toe. Um, if you want to knit the toe uh, with a tutorial video of mine, I have one on my YouTube channel here, which is called Simple Toe Up Socks Casting On. And that's a five uh, part tutorial. It takes you all the way through a German short row heel sock. On my Patreon page, I also have the Madly in Love socks tutorial, which is a really fun and simple color work sock pattern. And in there, I have the toe filmed as well, and that is on my Patreon page for Willow and Elder Tier patrons. Um, so I just did the heel. Um, it has a gusset, it has a short row, and it has a heel flap. And you might have seen my cutie sock on Instagram where I have knit these uh, different parts in different colors. Um, so, but I wasn't paying attention between filming. I was just kind of rushing to the next uh, point where I would um, film what I'm knitting. And actually after the gusset, uh, after the gusset increases end, um, you're supposed to knit a couple more rounds to uh, get the sock to the length that you want and I don't think I did that or <laughs> I think I just knit a couple rounds and then I went on to the next part so when I was turning the heel I um, discovered that this sock was very uh, short <laughs> it still fits me but uh, it doesn't it it won't fit comfortably over other socks or over uh, tights or, you know, um, they would need to be on my skin. Um, so, and I often wear my hand knit socks over uh, regular socks. Um, so I thought, okay, I won't be able to um, wear this over any other any other things because um, it will be too small. So then I figured I'll do ankle socks. I only have one pair of ankle socks and those are my Madly in Love socks. Um, and I find that I reach for them a lot. I only have one pair so I thought why not do a second pair. So that was a long story <laughs> explaining why I've made them into ankle socks. And um, they were very quick this way. Um, I have this much left. This was Regia Festival Color. Uh, it's a self-patterning yarn and I've made them almost completely matching, you see. Um, and this is the Roskilde colorway. And um, should I show you now? I think so. Yes, I'm going to show you my bullet journal now because I am documenting uh, how much yarn I use and um, um, which projects I finish. I always find it really um, satisfying to use the um, uh, Ravelry projects page. Um, you can tag your work, um, for example, with 2020 FO or now 2021 FO or tag them with whip or um, and then I can you can create a separate um, like file mm, like a like a separate tab and um, then it will show you the count of projects so um, I am able to see over the years how many um, objects or how objects, how many um, projects I have finished each year. Um, and I find that to be so motivating so I thought why not do that in my bullet journal as well. 
and I was actually inspired by Sandra from Sandra Cherry Heart from the Cherry Heart podcast and um, she was showing her bullet journal which looks amazing yeah I mean I could never <laughs> it's um, she does watercolor in there I believe or maybe it's just with with brush pens it's amazing so she's Sandra Cherry HRT um, on Instagram and she has a bullet journal highlight in there go and watch it you will not regret it um, and she had a really fun thing in her bullet journal which was a yarn tracker and I have copied this almost to the letter um, so I am in no way to credit for this it's all Sandra <laughs> so she made this yarn tracker um, so it looks like a honeycomb um, kind of like yarn stash wall and the idea is that you have one page for yarns coming in and one page for yarns coming out uh, going out so that means yarns you buy this year and yarns you use this year um, and so each of the honeycomb um, <laughs> cubicles <laughs> How do you say this? I don't know, but um, so they, they are each filled with circles uh, which signify a yarn and you know I've added some plants on here which was also Sandra's idea and you can see that I've already filled in two spots here this is for the Harry Potter uh, socks that I finished last week and this is for the rainbow striped socks and uh, this is just so much fun honestly and um, so I actually saw it too late uh, but Sandra she um, uses it a little bit differently so each circle on her uh, yarn tracker signifies 200 grams and then she also has a tally of per month and then she doesn't color the um, circles the exact color of the yarn but just um, um, I think she just measures like okay in January I have used 400 grams so I'll color two circles um, while well, I have already colored in these circles and this is just um, 70 grams or 60 grams because the socks weigh 60 grams and then I think the first one is also 60 grams um, so it's a different approach but I kind of like it this way uh, to have one color colored ball for each project and I'm able to draw in more so yeah <laughs> and then I haven't bought any yarn yet this year but um, as my boyfriend predicted <laughs> at the end of the year it will probably look like uh, this this uh, page would be completely full and this would be just be <laughs> that was his prediction so yeah I am going to color in a new slot here with um, these colors um, yeah or maybe should I just draw a tiny ball here I don't know because these are Think not even 50 grams yeah and so this is the first spread and then I have here are the projects so I've numbered the circles and then here for one I state the exact project and yarn name so here for the Harry Potter socks I have done roving yarns plum pudding uh, Harry Potter socks uh, 62 grams and then here I have helical rainbow socks, 59 grams. And then here I have a spread of grams coming in and going out because I think that would actually be more accurate. Uh, so I have uh, here in January the 62 and 59 grams. Um, yeah, so that's all very exciting. And then I have one more page 
of my projects and finished objects. So this is January. <laughs> I did this really badly. Um, and you can see the marker from the other page coming through. But So I've listed all of my projects here and then for the finished objects I have written that here. So I can't show you more because there are secrets in here. <laughs> um, that was a part of my bullet journal. I now realize that I'm marking my progress in a lot of places. Ravelry, my bullet journal, and now my whip board. I might be focusing too much on productivity. <laughs> I'm, I, I might be. Okay, so my gusset socks are finished. Um, yeah, this one. And the tutorial video is now up on my Patreon page, so you can go and watch it if you are a member. It is almost one hour long. It is 58 minutes long. And yes, I have included timestamps because I know I like to be thorough and holding your hand and, you know, do this with me every step of the way, but uh, I know that a lot of people aren't that way with tutorials and they just want to come right to the point. So that's why I include timestamps. So yes, this uh, tutorial is available on my Patreon page and also um, a new benefit that I have added in December. Uh, all patrons are now allowed to join the New Leaf Inner Circle Facebook group, which is it's my new favorite place to hang out. Um, it's just, it's a really small group of people. It's, it's just a very nice atmosphere in there. Uh, I don't know if you can say that about a Facebook group, but it's just really nice and people are sharing what they're doing and if they've had snow over the past weeks and um, yeah. Um, so if you're a patron, please do come join my Facebook group. Um, and if you're not, become a patron. <laughs> um, right, so on to my next thing. And I'm just glancing at what I need to talk about. Um, right, the Spectre sweater. I have made quite some progress. And um, the Spectre sweater isn't actually on the needles right now. And it's not because it's finished, but it's, it's because I was switching between the uh, sleeve and body because yes, I have been working on one of the sleeves. Um, okay, here it is. So I have knit one sleeve up to where I am with the body in terms of colors. So I am now on to color 17 of 24 and it's getting pretty big so it's uh, almost at my belly button so that is almost done for me <laughs> i am so short <laughs> um but yes i am loving this and uh, even though you know i'm kind of sad that i don't get to do this texture stitch anymore this cables and stuff but um also i like how simplistic it is with just the texture here and did i tell you that um uh, at first you knit it with this side out but after sleeve separation you actually turn to the wrong side so you basically only need to knit there's, there's a purl stitch in there. But um, yeah, and that is just really enjoyable and so, so clever. And you know, if there's anything that, uh, that Hohe's patterns are, it's clever uh, and beautiful. <laughs> so yeah, this is by Hohe Locatelli. It's the uh, Spectre sweater and it's originally designed for four colors, but I am using 22 colors. I'm using an advent calendar of 24 colors, but I have left out two because they were 
too similar. Um, so yes, I am up to the orange. And so this is the color that I am now using. And then I will progress to oops, this color. And then this. And the rest is there. And so I decided to knit the sleeve, uh, one of them, to see if I had enough yarn left over um, from after knitting the body to do both sleeves, and yes, I do, so I'm really happy about that. Um, and the sleeve, I don't remember who said it now, but um, someone said, um, I think it was about... I think it was about something else, um, about using magic loop or a short circular needle, um, about using it for socks, you know, the small nine inch circulars or using it for hats. For hats, it's amazing, even though, you know, I, I tend to do everything on magic loop right now. Um, but it did get me thinking that I have some that I have some short circulars um, in my needle stash and actually this is a very deep stash <laughs> this is from uh, my visit to Japan in um, 2014 maybe 16 I don't know I got a set of short circular needles from Clover, which is a Japanese craft brand, and if you're a crocheter, you will probably know them um, because Clover have some of the best crochet hooks. Um, they also have some sewing things, but very little knitting things. And then I saw these. Um, so they are plastic, and the cord is flat. So it's it's the same um, plastic as the needles, so there is no join whatsoever because it's all the same. And yeah, I got these in several different sizes. This is the smallest size that they had, or the smallest that I got. I got them in like five different sizes. And um, the sizes on there, you know, it's Japanese, but um, I wrote the size on there in uh, like a sharpie pen so this is three millimeter which is exactly the size that I'm using for the sweater so I thought that is perfect and I use them for the sleeve and um, yeah I will say I, I do still need to get used to it I do not like it <laughs> um, my hands get a little cramped and uh, I find that if I'm working, so I'm working with my fingers like this, and either my pinky finger or ring finger is rubbing against the fabric like this, and against, um, more, specific, more specifically, the needle with stitches on it. And after two days or so, I found that I had some... Um, kind of scratches like on, uh, on these fingers and or like a sore spot and I think it was because of that <laughs> so um, I <laughs> and I knit like this <laughs> kind of like how Spongebob and Patrick drink fancy tea <laughs> um, yeah but um, so I did notice that uh, but I do want to give it a chance, so I'm going to continue knitting the uh, sleeves on um, the short circulars because, um, yeah, also it's just light, portable, there is no long cord getting in the way, so there are some benefits, yeah. And one of my uh, patrons, Cindy, she was actually asking in the uh, inner circle group um, how I am doing the calculations for the, um, you know, how much yarn I need to use. So I will be doing a video on that tomorrow, I think, for my Patreon page. Um, because it's really, 
not that difficult. You just need to, you know, calculate with your gauge. But, um, yeah, it was really not that difficult. And I'm tallying all of the rounds on my notebook. So for each color, I am tallying how many rounds I knit. So I can replicate it for the sleeves. Um, and in case I needed to rip back the whole thing, um, then I knew what I had done. So I have two yarn balls attached at the moment, one to the body, one to the sleeves. I will be continuing on the body and then doing the sleeves again. But yes, I was actually tempted to wear it today because it's off needles. Um, but then I thought, no, that would be weird. <laughs> Um, okay, so that was the last thing that I worked on, um, but I do have some more crafting to show you. So I don't know if you saw my Instagram reel this week, um, but I have been into hand spinning again. So I've spun some yarns for an upcoming project and I'm actually spinning them for a specific project which is very new to me <laughs> I have always just spun yarns and then you know for the fun of it and then seeing when I use it but now um, um, I want to spin some yarns for a knit collage pattern so last week I shared the kaleidoscope cardigan that I had my eye on from uh, knit collage and I think I'll just put a picture here to remind you and it's just uh, a really bulky cardigan um, a lot of colors and uh, their yarn is hand spun and it just looks amazing and I saw it on the grocery girls podcast um, they've knit a couple of their patterns and um, yeah I just I just need to knit one of these so um, but I was looking at the pattern and it wasn't available um, and that had me puzzled but then I just emailed them I emailed knit collage and they say oh well the kaleidoscope it was part of a cal and uh, when they do a new cal I think they have one every quarter um, then the patterns are only um, are exclusive to the people who purchase yarn for the cal first and then after I don't know how many months they become um, available for everyone. Um, so I thought, ah, okay. Uh, but the, the kaleidoscope carding it actually looks really, really simple. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to purchase a different cardigan pattern from theirs, which is called the Pixelate Cardi. I'll put a picture up here. And uh, so you can see it's a, it's a color work cardigan. So it starts with one color and then it slowly transitions to another color, which is really fun. But I want to do the stripey cardigan. So I am going to buy that pattern and then just stripe my yarns. But I'm using those cast on numbers and increase numbers. So because I think they will be more or less the same. I don't know, probably not, but uh, we will see. So I have spent some yarn for that um, to go with the yarn that I already had from Wool and the Gang. So this is their Crazy Sexy Wool in Purple Haze. It's the icy lavender-ish blue. It's, it's more blue than purple, actually. Um, but yeah, it's really pretty. Um, and I have five balls of this. So that's one kilo of yarn because each ball is 200 grams. Um, and those balls on their own would not be enough for a uh, cardigan. Go figure, one kilo of yarn would not be enough for a cardigan. So, um, so I spun some yarn and... This is what I spun, <laughs> um, and if my spinning teacher could see this, she would give me a death glare because um, I 
spun really badly on purpose. <laughs> Let me uh, explain what that means. So, usually with spinning, and ex especially, you know, traditionally, you want to spin as thin as possible and as smooth as possible. Um, and Oh, I actually have some yarns left from the first time that I spun. Let me show you. <laughs> uh, I don't know of which one of these she said it, but, um, <laughs> see that? Um, but when I was spinning one of these, she took one look at it and said, huh, you wanted to get that done quickly, didn't you? <laughs> like, you rushed through it, didn't you? You didn't pay attention, you didn't... <laughs> Um, and she's right. So I, I was um, trying to get it done so I could move on to the next yarn because uh, we got to use wool first and then like sheep's wool and then onto alpaca and I was itching to get to the alpaca. Um, so yeah, she was right. Um, but the, the yarn from Knit Collage is also like very thick and thin and then uh, they also use these curls sometimes um, and yeah I just thought let's recreate some of the yarn in their style so I spun this um, so these are two yarns I had a white roving and then a blue and orange roving and um, I spun them both very thickly so I I didn't um, oh this is difficult to explain I didn't let the twist get to the yarn uh, so on some places the the especially the white yarn it isn't twisted much at all so and I didn't pull it apart I didn't draft the the roving so I just you know I had basically roving like this a little bit um, fluffier than this and I just spun it like that and yeah so she would be angry with me for this <laughs> but um, and turns out it was actually too uh, the yarn was too big to go through my, um, the, like, hooks on the side of my spinning wheel, so it kept getting stuck, and yeah, um, I should get some bigger hooks for that. Um, but it was really fun to spin, and actually, I highly advise, just, if you've never spun before, or if you want to get back into spinning, get your spinning mojo back, dare to spin badly. <laughs> Go ahead, spin badly. It is so much fun and you get this art yarn because, you know, let's just call it art yarn um, because this will look amazing when knit up. It really, really will, especially you know in a, in a knit collage pattern. Uh, it's it's kind of made for these yarns, and I think it will go perfectly with a yarn that is smooth like this, and to then have this textured hand spun. Uh, but I only had this much um, of this roving, so it's not too much. Uh, so then I spun a second ball with some leftover. Uh, roving that I had. Uh, so this is also the blue and orange yarn um, roving that I used for this and some um, pink that I also still had and I just think this looks amazing and it's a little bit too thin so I might just hold it double or hold it with a different yarn. Um, yeah but I swatched um, earlier this week and I already showed it to my patrons and um, yeah the swatch looked amazing <laughs> but I had 
after spinning this yarn I had put it straight on a ball and then the next day I knit this swatch and the yarn was curling up really really badly I will put in a clip right here where you can see so um, when the yarn was intentioned you can see that it kind of it would coil and curl and yeah <laughs> I think there was still a lot of twist on this yarn so um, so then what I did I just unraveled the swatch because I was going to anyway and then I skeined the yarn so I made a skein out of the ball and then I washed it and then I let it dry and now it is much less likely to coil like that uh, I think it will still coil in some places but um, yeah I can already see it's much better because when I put it in a skein before washing it was curling like this there was a lot of twist in there um, so those were my hand spinning adventures um, and it, it got my spinning mojo like tingling so I am itching to spin more but um, I also want to knit with this so I think I might um, knit this cardigan first before I spin any more. I actually have some roving with uh, nylon content so that I can spin socks but of course then I need to spin way more <laughs> uh, finely than this. Okay three more things I want to talk about. First thing I got a puzzle and it might not seem like it has anything to do with this podcast, but it does. It is by Tannis Fiber Arts, and I will put in some clips while I talk because I haven't brought the puzzle box up here. But um, it's a puzzle by Tannis Fiber Arts, uh, a Canadian company. Um, they, I think they dye their own yarns, but um, they took this picture of an amazing range of yarns and then made it into a puzzle and it is amazing I mean I love puzzling and especially this past year uh, 2020 was a lot of board games and puzzles um, and my mom loves to puzzle too and my boyfriend's family loves to puzzle so um, yeah I thought when I saw the pre-order for this product I thought I have to get it uh, yeah, and I, it did not disappoint. The puzzle is, oh, you know, aside from the fact that it was a beautiful photo, it was also like the, the print of the puzzle, it was, um, very shiny. Like it was printed on actual photography paper or something. Um, and it was very difficult. <laughs> it, it's, it's such a difficult puzzle, but I like that. I like a challenge in puzzling. Um, we often get these puzzles where there are a lot of faces or, you know, a, a lot of people on it um, uh, doing different things. Like, uh, if you're Dutch, you'll know the uh, Jan van Haastere puzzles. I love them. It's just so much going on. Um, but each piece is really recognizable because it'll have a little dog on it or part of a suitcase or whatever but here it's just all yarn like in <laughs> then you know with uh, i can't even explain it uh there were some multicolored yarns in there like self-striping yarns are variegated and those were easier but then there were also hands there's a hand spun skein in there kind of like laying like this and it is so difficult so I just found myself <laughs> I just found myself just uh, rearranging all of the puzzle pieces just by the direction of where the yarn is going and then trying to fit those together it was so difficult but that for me means it was so much fun so just to say I highly recommend this puzzle go and get this puzzle and end of uh, commercial break. <laughs> no, it was it was not. Um, this was not gifted. 
it's this is genuine um, yes I just love it so go and get it <laughs> um, yeah I, we have we have made it two times now and I want to make it again <laughs> and I want to take more I want to take pictures like this and create my own puzzle or I want Tannis Fibars to do more puzzles like this because it was just really really fun okay the end uh, now the second thing um, I have I might have a moth problem yes I said the M word so when I was knitting with the Harry Potter yarn last week um, the is in a jar right there um, I already hinted at I might have a moth problem because the the skein was just it was damaged in one spot and it didn't look like moths but then um, some person on my Instagram said yeah that kind of does look like moth damage so I went into full panic mode no, not really. But um, <laughs> uh, luckily, at the same time, uh, Christy uh, from uh, Christy Glass, she was um, talking about moths on her uh, Instagram and what she did. So I thought, okay, perfect. Um, I'll just do what she does. So I went online and I ordered the products. Um, not the exact products because um, Christy lives in America and I don't. And I want to shop local, so I went on a Dutch website called Motte Weg. <laughs> Very simple, Motte Streepje Weg. Um, and so I bought cedar oil, and actually it is American cedar oil, but yeah. If they've already bulk bought it, then I feel less climately conscious about that, so um, so it's from Red Cedar. It's not, um, an, um, how do you say it? It's not the protected kind of cedar. It's, you know, sustainably grown. So I got the cedar oil, which smells amazing. It smells like freshly sharpened pencils, um, uh, kind of mixed in with, um, pine trees, sort of like that. Um, and so you put this on some cloth um, and then just wipe it on the inside of your um, closet. So I did that and I bought 10 of these cedar blocks. They also smell really good. Um, which, you know, you put in some paper. So just a scrap of paper, not big like this, but just so it folds around uh, and then you put it um, in your drawers or uh, you hang it up in your closet. The paper is meant to shield it from your clothes so that um, if it, you know, um, it may cause stains because it might leak some oil, I think. Um, yeah, so I got 10 of those um, because I have a lot of places where I keep yarn and hand knit items. So first I protected my a wardrobe where I keep my hat knit garments because it's one thing if a moth gets into a ball of yarn it's an entirely other thing if it gets into a finished hand handmade item yeah I will not tolerate that <laughs> um, yeah and then I got some moth traps I got these eco sect um, there are three in here, so yeah, I'm just going to place these in the attic because I think that that is where the problem, the source, the hive might be. <laughs> uh, yeah, and I then I got this for free, I think, because I didn't order this. Um, so it's kind of a, um, it looks like, um, it kind of looks like a bar of soap. Um, this is oil, but then in its solid form, um, yeah, and it, it smells like, it is really odorful, <laughs> but in a good way, it smells nice. Um, 
So you can just place it open like that in a closet. So I might also do this in the attic because then the smell will um, go furthest. <laughs> I don't know. Ah, so yeah, so I will keep you updated on this. Um, I hope there is nothing to update you about because I hope there won't be any moths. But if they are, I am now fully equipped. <laughs> so yes, um, it just, it smells really nice, um, but I am aware, aware that I should not let Momo get in touch with this, especially the oil and this. It says do not let people or animals eat from this. These I'm not quite sure because it's just wood. I'm not quite sure if this is harmful. Um, yes, so that is part one of the moth saga and um, I'll keep you posted. Then the third thing and the last thing that, that I want to talk about is the yarn that uh, my mom gave me to make her a beret. Um, I don't know when we got this yarn. It was in summer. I think it was two summers ago then. I think it was 2019. Um, we bought these yarns, or she bought these yarns at Wool Based, which is a, uh, she's a Dutch indie dyer. She's very local to me. And um, yeah, she dyes beautiful yarns. And my mom is like, <laughs> I'm going to say something that sounds like it could apply to any knitter. Um, but my mom is like, she buys not really a lot of yarn, but then, you know, she buys new yarn and then doesn't use it. <laughs> she doesn't knit as much as I knit. So, and, you know, suffice to say, you know, she likes yellow. And yeah, that has me thinking of Caroline at the Dunder Knit, uh, of the Knitting Vicariously podcast. Are you related to my mom? <laughs> um, anyway, she got a bunch of different yarns. So, so I will need the mohair for the beret and then either a fingering weight or a sport weight. I'll just show you them one by one. So... Head wool based atelier. Um, this is called her olive green. Yeah, I suppose it is kind of green. It's a really pretty color. Um, so this is her uh, kid silk base. Um, oh, it is really pretty, isn't it? Caroline, you're onto something. <laughs> um, oh, this one has lost its tag. Um, this seems to be a kind of gray base. Um, so I don't know what kind of sheep it was, but it isn't a completely white base. So it might be, um, I don't know, there might be some Gotland in there. Um, and it is a bit thicker, so I would say it's worsted or DK. Yeah, but I'm not going to use this for the beret, it's too thick. Um, and then I think these are the same base. Okay, these are actually the same colorway. Um, they're 100% merino and 310 meters per 100 grams. So that's, that's like a sport weight. Um, oh yeah, they are the same. And then this one is a different color, uh, but it's the same base. So also a sport weight. Yeah, so I think I'm going to use one of these together with the mohair, or maybe this one. I think that would be too dark. This is nice. Yeah, I think I'll use these. So uh, if, you're, well, if you're confused about which beret, it's the Beast Beast Beret by Sari Nordland. I knit two of these. Um, one as a gift knit and then one for myself because everything that I gift knit 
I suddenly wanted to have for myself even though I was never a beret person um, but yeah it's super fun to wear I will say with the mohair it was kind of itchy um, but you know I think if I, I wore it for a very long walk that time if I wear it for shorter walks then it won't have the opportunity to get itchy especially with my bangs so yes this is gonna be another beret yes and I think that is everything that I wanted to say I forgot one more thing so I still need to mark my Spectre sweater progress and I actually hadn't filled it in yet um, let me get it back up again what would you say that this is is it 30 percent of a sweater maybe even 50 is it over half I'm using the 17th color it's over half of the colors Hmm. I think I think I'm gonna go with 50% because it's not I think I'm over the actual half halfway point of knitting but because I just know the sleeves are gonna take me longer so I'm gonna I'm gonna put it at 50 um, there and that is my final score of this week so next week I will wipe these off the board and there will be new things on there. Um, yeah, and we'll see what happens with the rest. <laughs> and how are you doing this week? Um, you know, there's been a lot going on in the world, so I hope that you are doing well. Uh, I hope that you are knitting or crocheting or sewing or needle punching something nice. Uh, do let me know what you're working on and um, yeah, tell me if you're excited for my new cardigan project because I am. <laughs> I want to show you some progress of that next week. I hope so. And let me know what you think of the live podcast thing, if you are okay with it being once a month. And um, I think I would do it on Thursday, right about this time, so Thursday 2 p.m. CET. Right, I'm gonna call it a day. Thank you all so much for watching. Thank you for being here with me and keeping me company. And I'll see you all next week. Bye-bye.